On and, and we're back here, and again, uh, we're actually very privileged. It's an honor, as I said to Steve when he came down, but Steve Kroll and his affiliation with the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary in Alpena. Uh, Steve, a longtime member of the Alpena community. He's actually in the area tonight because we have this forum up in Sheboygan where we're planning on having another community outreach event, another opportunity to engage the public, talk a little bit about what the proposed Wisconsin Lake Michigan National Marine Sanctuary will mean for all of us as stakeholders, not only in the five counties, that, or the three counties and the five cities that are involved, Mequon, Port Washington, Sheboygan, Manitowoc, and Two Rivers, Ozaki, Sheboygan, and Manitowoc counties, but really for more broadly the state of Wisconsin, the potential impact, and how all of us have worked together to drive this process forward to the place it is today. Having Steve here and really having a chance for him to share his story and lend his voice to this for us is really, as I said at the outset, an honor. So Steve comes as a veteran of the uh, Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, actually a full service dri uh, dive operator, uh, owned a business out there. So I'm gonna just be quiet myself for a change, folks, and I'm actually gonna pivot, and I'm gonna turn to Steve and allow him to talk to you a little bit about his background and, and how that background lent itself to you becoming involved with the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary effort. Okay, well, thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure to be here. We got a beautiful community here. Thank you. We All do. All the way up and down this coastline. This has been a great trip. My wife and I, first time my wife has come with me on some kind of adventure like this, and I do enjoy these kinds of things um, and seeing what you have here. And I wouldn't, I, I don't know as if I'd known what all you had here except for this trip. And now that I'm here, I mean, the kinds of things you have going here, I mean, once this all gets linked together so that everybody can realize it, I guess one of the things I've noticed is that it isn't kind of tied together as one unique theme. And, and that's what the sanctuary program can do for you. It can bring all the ends together and make it one common effort and not duplicate effort. As some people think it, it will, it actually doesn't. It eliminates duplication because you've got coordination going of, of different efforts and you can pull those kinds of efforts. Well, you know, and your perspective is really extends significantly there because you were involved at the outset over in Thunder Bay, correct? In terms oh, of just the sanctuary I, I, discussion. I was an absolute no-sayer to the federal government at that time. I guess my turnaround kind of thing came when after we got our designation and they put out applications for the advisory council, I went to the meetings and slowly over time, I began to realize that this advisory council which consisted of 15 members and 15 alternates, were really the driving force and determine what was going to happen. And after a year or so, when you had made some recommendations and then they get the feedback back from the staff, here's what we're doing with those recommendations and here's where we're at and uh, where should we go from here, you just kind of go, wait a minute, this is actually, they're actually doing what they said they were going to do. You know, and, and, and we got an opportunity then to shape our community the way we want it, you know, and to take and actually look at, a, uh, have a group of professionals whose job is dependent upon successfully implementing what we want to do. Sure. Well, and you reference you reference the advisory councils, so of mm -hmm. course the sanctuary system model is such that within each of the sanctuaries there is an advisory council. And what exactly. I what I love about the advisory council and just more broadly that sanctuary model, especially now that it is driven, as you alluded to, from the community up, and it's really right. community and local ownership over all of this effort. But what I love about the sanctuary advisory councils is that it's it's really illustrative of the fact that engagement of community stakeholders starts at the outset of designation and continues very much beyond that. Beyond that, yeah, you know, and. Uh, our first management plan was handed to us from the federal government because at that time it was a top down thing. But um, scheduled for five years after that, we had to redo our own management plan, which actually took a little longer. You know how things go. They all do. They all do. It's all part of the process and the funding if it's there kind of situation. So we redid our management plan. Now our management plan was three volumes about this thick. And now, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's it's basically a handout. Sure, sure. <laughs> and, and it's all performance objectives. I'm an educator. I was a high school mathematics teacher, okay. along with being my dive shop involvement and charter involvement and my sanctuary involvement. 
Um, <clears throat> but being an old educator, we just kind of, I was, by that time, I was also the chair of the Sanctuary Advisory Council. Wow. And I, I wanted that position by that time. So in five years' time, I went from saying no to saying, let's get going. Right. This is a golden opportunity. This is, this is what we want to make it. Right. And let's decide what we want to make it. Let's have some. Right. So we went with this performance objective kind of format, you know. Here's what we want to do, here's the strategy for getting it done, and here's how we'll know when we're there. So in your five-year engagement on the council at that point, over the course of those first five years, from starting as sort of a, well, I'll put my name into the hat, see if they actually yep. would take me, mm -hmm. to now you're chairing the advisory council after a five-year period of time. How did you start to see involvement within the community itself and overall impact of the sanctuary within the community? during those five years and um, from a sense of maybe community ownership from a sense of just overall impact mm -hmm. whether economically or just more broadly within the community from the educational side of things what did you start to see happen over those the course of those first five years well I, I like the fact that you said take ownership because that's exactly what you do it, it, and uh, you got to remember this advisory council represents 15 different right. fingers if you would of, of and represents 15 different kinds of things, not just just not just your government, but we had a fishing representative, I was a diving representative, and, and so on, you know, citizen at large kind of thing. Sure. There were some other people that had concerns, and all of us have great skills, you know, and together we have a fantastic uh, base, if you would, of, of knowledge. But putting all that to work and seeing how what we were doing in the sanctuary went into our school program. You know that those things actually we even devised in time here we have stuff that goes to our fourth grade we have fourth grade curriculum and we replaced within the guidelines of the state of Michigan a lot of, of, of material with material that now has the children relating to their their sanctuary and their own, their own their own town and community right you know it's still teaching the three R's or whatever the, the objectives are for that unit but that whole unit then is done with the idea of researching shipwrecks or some kind of field stuff like that. Right. And as an educator, I think that's what touched me the most was that I found that honestly the diving aspect of it wasn't what it was about. Yeah, the wrecks are preserved and yes, us divers can go diving, and but it was the history. It was the collection of that history. It was that maritime heritage that our area had that we were rediscovering Sure. And those core values that that group of people had back in those days is now re-emerging through us. And that's priceless. Right. Well, know. in fact, to your point, not only have you had the, developed the curriculum for fourth graders, where every fourth grader within the district, of course, is touched and has an opportunity to engage and connect with that element of the lake and obviously your maritime past, but in fact, the high school kids Oh, through yeah. that shipwreck alley program, they're actually out on the water, yeah, that's and a, and yeah. you know to your point, I think that sense of giving kids um, a, a real sense of ownership and pride of the mm -hmm. past, right, and a connection to community and specialness of place, and and now seeing this feed up into higher education too, Alpena Community College Alpena with their dive college has program, the their technology, yeah. Marine yeah. technology, you know, from that we we did all that, and, right. and now it's, I mean, it's almost hard for us, for me to go back and say. Here's all the things we did. It's just we forget them, right? You know, they just have become part of what we expect every day, right? And um, I'm not saying we take it for granted because we're always brainstorming, and that's one of the things and reasons why I'm over here. I might get another idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know I will. I've so we're got not just looking to take yours. You're oh, going to look. That's good. Exactly. We'll take that. Right. right. And that's yeah. that's the, the whole thing. You know, I'm over here because I represent a very powerful group of people in my life probably the, the greatest group on earth and you might think you might have one over here in Wisconsin and I'm sure you will but uh, <clears throat> we want you guys to be successful we want to share what we have yes we want to get from you what you have going that hey I was just up there where the Cullenbergs were engines were made you know and I just took a bunch of pictures and our our museum believe it or not uh, Besser Museum, not the sanctuary, Besser Museum in Alpena is restoring an old fish boat hmm. from Rogers City called the Catherine B. And they have a Cullenberg engine in there. 
And when I was up here to the fish town, up, uh, and I looked at a little picture of Cullenberg history, here's that boat Roger, from the Catherine V from Roger City. So, yeah. there, you know, we already have connections. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, so I've got some pictures and i got some contacts back there and I'm going to pass all this information around. Well, and you know, you hit on this, so I'm really glad you brought that up, Steve. The sense of, so I had a chance to go out to Capitol Hill Oceans Week back in 2015, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the effort to designate the Wisconsin Lake Michigan National Marine Sanctuary. I know you've been there, you've been out to D.C. and had the opportunity to speak before the House of Representatives a couple of times about impact of your existing sanctuary and advocate for an expansion of that sanctuary. I think one of the things that I sensed very palpably, and maybe you can speak a little bit about this, is not only the local relationships that you're building and the local support and connection among stakeholders, but also the way that within the sanctuary system, you very much have a sense of support and engagement and connection with all of these other sanctuary communities. And I think in terms of just really helping to drive forward the success of your own sanctuary, having that support and engagement with those other sanctuary communities is really vital. Mm -hmm. So I sensed that clearly when I was out there, and I don't oh, know yeah. if you have seen that and experienced that in Alpena I, I, with Thunder I, Bay. It, it, it just mushrooms, Tom. It's like, uh, I, I spend my time, I'm a snowbird, well, I spend it in Key Largo, <laughs> okay? Well, there's a National Marine Sanctuary yes. in the Keys. Right. Well, there's community colleges in the Keys. There's community college in Alpena. And back and forth, I ended up meeting a gentleman at an event I went to for the sanctuary that happened to be part of the community college there. And now Alpena Community College Maritime uh, Archaeology thing is now working with and partnering, working on a partnership. I mean, it's just talking stages right now. But that kind of connection you know, is all over the place. Uh, Ballard now does his things all over the world, and uh, Alpena didn't have the Wi-Fi or cable potential to do that, but because we had a need, you know, we got grant monies that right. made it happen, and now we broadcast live, and we're online with Ballard, and we put it all in our theater there, and it, it brings the world to Alpena, as well as take what we have out. Um, and Ballard came to Alpena, right? You know, right. Uh, so you just keep drawing from all over the place, and, and you know this is a small world. If you travel, you run into somebody you know.